furs and leathers. Hennick Furs, a prominent Montgomery business, almost settled in the bustling streets of New York City. Instead, due to a charming Southern belle, Hennick Furs crossed the Mason-Dixon line and made Montgomery its home. Hennick Furs opened at 251 West 30th Street in New York City in 1920. Max Hennick immigrated from Romania three years earlier and brought to America his expertise in fur manufacturing, a skill learned from his father in Europe. Max sewed every fur by hand, a tradition passed down to his son, John Hennig Sr., who joined the family business. During World War II, John was stationed in Fort Benning, Georgia, where he met and fell in love with Eunice Hayes from Florala, Alabama. The two married in 1946. John decided to bring his father's fur trade south. This began what would become the largest fur company in the southeast and one of the largest in the nation. Our abundant collection continues to grow by leaps and bounds with world-class selections, including designs by Musi, which was seen last season in town and country. This year, look for us in Harper's Bazaar, expanding and incorporating new trends, including multitudes of colors intertwined with knitted and natural fur, leather and cashmere, allow us to offer our customers a selection second to none. Fur coats have been around through thick and thin. They used to be very bulky, but today's garment is much thinner because of new manufacturing techniques. The new lightweight fur coats are also cut closer to the body, but they still provide old-fashioned warmth. Today, fur coats are made for a changing market that values less bulk and more texture. The beaver pelt now undergoes multiple transformations until it doesn't even resemble the original pelt. They steam the fur to fluff it up. Then they give it a static charge to make the hairs stand on end. The pelt then goes under a row of little blades several times. This shears the fur so the hairs are uniform and the pelt less bulky. But because the downy undercoat is the most insulating part, this fur will still be warm. Grooving is a new technique that involves carving a pattern into the dyed fur. The blades cut a zigzag pattern down the length of the fur giving the beaver pelt a unique look and feel. Now the furrier demonstrates a process called letting out. He feeds a pelt to a machine that slices it into diagonal ribbons. Yes, he's cutting it to shreds. But when this process is complete, they'll have a new and improved fur. They sew the diagonal strips together, arranging each a little lower than the last. They use a special fur sewing machine. As the operator feeds the strips, he pushes the fur down so it doesn't get caught in the seam and ruin the look. It's something that takes skill and experience. The narrow strips of fur created by this letting out process will run the full length of a coat. It's a more flowing look than simply sewing whole pelts together, but it also makes the fur a bit rippled. A process called blocking will correct that. They wet down the leather of the pelt. Then they split it a bit at the end to fit the pattern that's been traced onto a board underneath. They staple the fur onto the pattern. After leaving it to dry overnight, they trace the original pattern onto the leather side of the fur, now smoothed out from the stretching. They mark a spot for a pocket and trim the fur to the pattern so the dimensions are now exact.
specialized finishers sew a cloth pocket into the slit prepared for it. They stitch in the zipper and then cut out pieces of silk to line the coat. Before they sew in that lining, they build up the front edges of the garment by tacking lamb's wool on the inside edging. This will add structure and help the fur hold its form as they put in the lining. Starched cotton tape now goes into the hem of the coat to keep the fur from stretching. Hand craftsmanship has always been a key element of the fur industry. Every fur gets these hand-stitched finishing touches. Once the label goes on, this fur coat is ready for a night on the town.